friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay Thurston and in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through 10 ways you can make your home look expensive on a budget. This came up time and time again in the comments section of several of my recent videos. Some of you want to embrace the new trends for 2021, but it's not like you can run out and buy a whole house full of new furniture. Some of you are pushing against current trends, but maybe you're worried that your design ideas are bigger than your budget. This list will give you some quick and easy ways that you can upgrade your space no matter your decor style. My first tip for making your home look more expensive on a budget is to explore the idea of contrast. If everything is the same color or a similar color in your space, it becomes very flat to the eye. But if you add layers of contrast, it instantly creates a level of cohesion often found only in designer rooms. Try a dark wall color if you have mostly white furniture and white bedding. This will instantly create a vibe that makes it feel more designer. Or maybe you have dark bedding and you don't really want to color the walls. Try some lighter colored pillows, blankets, layer in some different texture and contrast within the color story of your bedding. If you have a dark sofa, go for lighter accessories. If you have a light sofa, go for some darker accessories or different levels of tones. Maybe you have a mid-tone and a darker tone and some paler accents that are more background pillows. My next tip, play with color. Personal style, like interior design style, is the unique blend of what's interesting to your eye. We've all had that moment when we walked into a retail store after the fresh new season has arrived and we're mesmerized by the new color palettes. Generally, as humans, we are interested in what is new, what feels fresh. That's why design is constantly changing. And it's really interesting to think about how you can sort of manipulate that so that you don't have to feel like you need to reinvent the wheel every time a new color palette is released every year. I don't know about you, but I can't afford to redo everything in my house every year. Although I definitely enjoy a project, I like to have things that last and are sustainable. And I don't have a million dollars to spend on this kind of stuff. So I find it's best to create a color palette for a space that you're designing that is about three to five basic colors that you stick within. For me, I like to design my space around white, hints of black, natural warm wood, tones, some hints of gray here and there, and then our accent color is generally a muted denim blue, and I use that color fairly sparingly. If you want to make it easy to redecorate, carry a simple color palette throughout your entire home and then update the accent colors throughout the seasons. Then you can move pieces room to room without breaking the budget every time you want to try something new in your home. Play around with what color palettes are pleasing to your eye. Try mixing warm and cool neutrals for an elevated look. If you have a base of neutrals, you can easily change the accent colors to match your mood or season. My next tip for elevating your living space, upgrade those light fixtures. If you're working with this, or this, or this, then my friend, it's time for a light fixture upgrade. Now stop thinking that it's gonna cost a fortune to change your light fixtures and stop thinking it's this huge project that you can't figure out how to do. A quick Google or YouTube search will reveal a ton of different options that will teach you in about 30 minutes or less exactly how to do this. You will have this thing up before you know it. So my first tip is you've gotta source the right light fixture for your space and for your style and for your budget. And and what better place to do that than Ikea. So here's a few of my favorite light fixtures that are super cost effective. And I'm even considering these for some upgrades to my space. The Adder Skin is a ceiling pendant light. It's got three different little opal glass globes and brass hardware. It's so elevated yet sort of timeless. It feels fresh yet historical almost. This is actually a full line of different lighting fixtures at Ikea. So there's lots of different options. This one an actual ceiling lamp so in case you want to get rid of this lamp that's awkward you might want to go ahead and go for something more like this it comes in an opal glass and a clear glass and both are so beautiful what's cool about the clear glass one though is that it actually shows the brass fixtures within the light fixture itself giving it a little bit more of that industrial type of a vibe or I don't know it's just cool I really like this one 
The next one is the Kong Schultz Sunaby. I hope I'm getting that right. This one is a pendant lamp, white, only $41.99, definitely more on the modern side of things. And I just really love the shape of this. Something about it feels super fun and elevated, like it came from Design Within Reach or something. And $41.99, come on, how can you beat that price? Sulklint is another one that has a little bit more of a historical sort of a reference while also feeling really timeless and modern at the same time. I love this sort of fluted glass around the bulb of the pendant and the gray tones of the glass are really modern and interesting. At only $19.99, it's a pretty incredible steal. You'll put one of these up and you'll wonder why we didn't do this sooner. My next tip, incorporate mirrors. If you're living in a small space, and I get a lot of questions from you guys about how to make small spaces feel more manageable, adding mirrors is cliche for a reason. It makes your home feel bigger. You wanna make sure to find one that fits your design aesthetic. There's so many options out there, but I personally always find the best mirrors when I'm out thrift shopping and sourcing at antique malls. You can find some really cool wood carvings if you're looking for anything with some a little story to it, a little texture, a little history, that's definitely the place to go. If you're looking for something more modern and inexpensive, again, you can try retailers like Ikea. And if you place your mirror in an area of your home that maybe is a dark corner or isn't getting enough window light, it can actually reflect light to illuminate a darker part of your space. It can make your home feel bigger and brighter. You can find mirrors for super affordable prices and they will instantly elevate your space and make it feel more expensive. They fit into to any decor style. They are easily sourced secondhand and on a budget. They can be DIY, painted, and upgraded later to fit your design style as it evolves over time. The next way that you can make your home look more expensive on a budget, fresh paint. Paint is one of the easiest and cheapest ways to make a big dramatic change in your home. And if you were looking earlier at creating more contrast in your home, like my first tip, paint is one of my first go-to steps. Adding a backdrop that really illuminates your art, lamps, furniture is really going to make all of your things in your space feel elevated, more expensive, and more custom and designer. Try painting your kitchen cabinets if you're bored with what's there currently. If you're not ready for a full kitchen renovation, painting cabinets can be a quick weekend project that although is a little time consuming and a little frustrating, it totally can be worth it. Try painting a room a fresh neutral. Just because you moved into your space and it already had white walls, doesn't mean that it's a white that actually makes your space work. I noticed that our rental had the most yellow, dingy-ish looking white, and it was more yellow leaning than I was looking for. I really wanted a fresh and bright, clean white. Try painting half a wall to create the illusion of wainscoting or a headboard, and just a little bit more visual interest in a space. This is what I tried in our main bedroom and it's amazing the results. And I still get DMs almost every single day asking me about things next to my headboard. But if you look carefully at that picture, there actually is no headboard there. It's just a simple half wall paint job, a quick accent that allowed me to feel like we had a headboard even though we weren't ready to shell out the money for our dream piece of furniture. You can also try painting older and thrifty pieces of furniture to give them a totally fresh feeling so that they fit into any space that you're trying to redesign. My next tip, upgrade that hardware. Another super cost-effective thing that you can change on a budget is changing hardware, either on furniture or cabinetry in your home. Whether it's bathroom or kitchen cabinetry, a lot of times you've got some really boring hardware and it's kind of funny how big of a difference it actually can make. If you wanna add in more black accents to your space, for example, try trading out your pulls and knobs for a black set. That can make a big difference, add a lot of contrast to your space. I went more the brass route in my home. It made a huge difference. If you wanna change your dresser or maybe your bedside tables, for example, changing the hardware can make a big impact, especially if you don't feel like painting them. Tip number seven, for making your home look and feel more expensive on a budget, hang window treatments. When I lived in a beautiful studio apartment on Seattle's famous Capitol Hill, I had a very small space. It was under 300 square feet and it had big, beautiful windows on two full sides of the apartment. I was so lucky to get a corner unit on the top floor of my building, but I really was worried about hanging curtains. As much as I believe in drapery and how they can completely transform a space, 
space, I was worried that I would be cutting off some of my beautiful view or limiting the sunshine streaming into my windows in the morning. I'm so regretful that I never tried hanging curtains in that apartment and have always vowed to make sure that I have beautiful, custom, sewn perfectly by me curtains in every home that I live in in the future. If you don't love to sew, I've also used iron-on to hem my curtains. So here's my best tips for hanging them properly. You wanna get curtains that are long enough that you can go about two to three inches from the ceiling and then all the way to the floor just kissing the floor. I personally don't like it when the curtain breaks or puddles at the floor. I find it's just a little bit more of a dust collector. It's harder to open and close curtains like that. I prefer to hem them exactly so they just barely hit the floor. I hang them, I steam the curtains, and then I pin them when they're hanging so that I can either iron on or sew them to hem them the perfect length. I'm not super crazy if they're a little bit off here and there. I just want that overall aesthetic that they hang straight and that they're easy to open and close. The last tip is when you're hanging those, again, two to three inches from the ceiling, but then you wanna pull out the width of your curtain brackets as far as you can, just to make sure that you give that window that sort of presence, like it's as huge as possible. That can really create visual interest in a space, even if there's no architectural elements to grab your attention. If you kind of create this illusion that you have a huge window there, or even a faux window, like I've covered my closet back here with some curtains to create my little filming space, but curtains can really create some incredible depth to your space, and you can even use it for the illusion of more windows if your space doesn't have any. Tip number eight, source furniture secondhand. I always think that it's kind of funny when I walk into a space and it all feels like it was ordered from all modern or Target or various other Ikea retailers. I'm a big believer in those stores. I think it's fun to shop discount. I love home goods. I love Ikea, like a lot of you. I don't want my entire space to be from those stores. I much prefer to elevate my space, make it feel more expensive by sourcing pieces that were previously expensive on the secondhand market. You can find all kinds of classic designs for any interior design style, pieces that came from your favorite, higher end retailers, those places you feel like you can't afford but wish you could. OfferUp is a resale app. You might have a different resale app in your area. I used it to sell furniture that I was kind of over, maybe just didn't fit into my design style anymore. I was able to source so many great pieces, beautiful, practically new West Elm pieces on the cheap on OfferUp. I found the table in our kitchen dining nook. I found the desk that was in my home office so many pieces that I wanted to buy but couldn't afford. Try thrift shopping, antique malls, resale apps like Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp and Let Go, websites like Craigslist, and try selling old pieces that you no longer want to save money for the things that you do want. That way, when you want to invest in a beautiful brand new piece of furniture, you have some coin from the things that you let go. Tip number nine for making your home feel more expensive, try rehanging your art. Not ready to buy any new pieces? Not really the DIY type? Try taking all the art down from your apartment or home, organize it by size, organize it into different color palettes, test it out in different rooms, maybe places you've never hung those pieces before. This can really transform your space. I used to have my favorite abstract landscape painting. This one's by Charlie Palmer. It's one of my all time most prized possessions. This piece has always been a staple in the living area from my studio apartment to my one bedroom apartment to this three bedroom rental house that I share with my fiance Travis. I have always kept it either in my living room or dining room. I try to change things up as you know. I've been redesigning my way through this entire rental. If you're interested in checking out those room makeovers you can check out my rental house playlist here for all my makeovers. While I was making over the spaces I actually decided to relocate this painting to our bedroom. Wow, it looks so good over Travis's Ikea dresser. It matched really well with some accent pillows on the bed that I added from the Studio McGee collaboration with Target. It has this sort of chambrayish gray tone and it's perfect together. You never know. Try rehanging your art. See if you can create some new visual interest and some new engagement, some new excitement for yourself and make your place feel more expensive in the process. All right, we're here, my final tip and anyone 
anyone who knows me really well will be waiting for this one. Decorate with plants. One thing that I notice in just about every designer home that I look at is how they play with greenery in a space. I'm a big believer that fake plants look fake. I'm so sorry to break it to you. If you love fake plants, please don't take offense. I just personally don't feel like investing in things that make my space feel false, and I'd much prefer to learn something new and develop my green thumb. It hasn't always been easy. Certainly, plants have died from time to time, but Travis he does such an incredible job taking care of our plants, and we have about 85, I think, in our home at this point, which is pretty crazy, and it's really fun to try new things with plants in our space. A couple things that make plants a little easier. First, see if you can source plants that are historically easy to take care of. You can search Pinterest for these lists and graphics. There's so many different ideas out there. I won't go into all the ins and outs of plants because there's a ton of videos and inspiration out there from plant experts to help you find the perfect plant for your space, climate, lighting situation, the whole nine. Here's a couple that I would recommend that I find pretty no fail in my space. You can always go for a snake plant. You can decorate with that thing pretty much anywhere. They don't need a lot of light or water. So you can kind of neglect them a little bit here and there and they're still gonna look great in your space, still stay green. You can get them small, huge. We put one in our guest bathroom space and we absolutely love it. Philodendrons and pothos are also among my favorite plants. I love how their little vines tend to coil together. I love putting them in hanging planters in spaces to add a little bit more visual interest, pull the eye up in a space. The last plant that I wanna recommend is a Chinese evergreen. We have several of these in our home as well. They need medium light, so they can't be in a space with no light, but they come in a variety of different colors. You can get some with beautiful white markings on the leaves or even pink markings on the leaves, and they're fairly easy to take care of as well. We keep track of all of our plants using an app called Planta. It's super easy. All you do is plug in the plants in your home. You can say what room that the plant is in. You can even take a picture of the plant so that you recognize them when the to-do list pops up. The app will actually put together a plan for how to take care of this plant. Everything from watering, sunlight, anything else you need to know about fertilizer, irrigation, and then it will give you alerts and reminders on a schedule every single day of when you need to do different things to take care of the plants in your home. You might just try this out with one or two plants to start with if you're new to taking care of plants. Build up your confidence with something simple and as you gain a little bit more interest and confidence then you can take on some more challenging plants and add more layered texture to your space. Nothing plastic only real plants here. Real is real my friends and it's always going to make your space look more expensive and authentic. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments which of these tips you thought about most which you might want to try in your space and if there's any that you were thinking of that I forgot in this video. Subscribe for more interior design and home decor tips. I'm releasing new videos every Sunday and I can't wait to share them with you. If you'd like to check out my video on how to decorate using the Japandi style you can find that link right here. And if you want to check out my playlist on interior design tips, I'll link that for you down here so you can check that one out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye my friends. Can you guys see this nose? Puppies are ready for their walk. All right, you guys, let's get out of here.